Far Cry 3 is a jingoistic romp through generic white male power fantasies treading on indigenous cultures at every turn. Far Cry 3 is a haunting portrayal of maturity, using a vibrant facade to mask a dark character study, delivering one of the most poignant stories in recent memory. Far Cry 3 is a cluttered sandbox bogged down by mediocre mechanics and a meandering focus. Far Cry 3 was released in 2012. Among an industry brimming with tedium and spaghetti, as the tradition goes, 2012 actually was not a bad year as far as releases go. The shockwaves that Skyrim had left in its wake hadn't yet reached most AAA games development cycles, and most of the big releases that year ranged from competent to pretty good with a few pieces of dog shit thrown in here and there. But 2012 was not ready for the fucking breeze block to the head that was Ubisoft's next big release. Far Cry 3 ripped my fucking tongue out of my head and peeping to death with it. And I loved it. The widely revered slash tolerated AAA sandbox collectathon radio tower podcast extravaganza had reached its peak, striking just the right balance of mindful stealth indulgence and linear control, which just so happened to coincide with the game's themes. Far Cry 3 is a game enjoyed through a drug induced haze, through psychotic violence, excessive explosions, and primal lust, all melding into this experience enjoyed by many but appreciated much too little. The analytical conversation basically ended with like Skyrim with guns. Fuck. The consumer view landscape rolling over and going back to jerking off Call of Duty in its prolonged death throes. Looks like I'm the only one that can do this masterpiece any justice then. In Far Cry 3, you begin your adventure as a cute little twink named Jason Brody, a professional douchebag white boy who is captured by pirates to be the little sex clown of Voss, who delivers one of the most chilling and memorable monologues of all time at the beginning of the game, and about 30 more times throughout the duration of it. What makes Voss unique is not the fact that he's fucking nuts, but the way in which he's fucking nuts. This is neither your Kefka nor your Joker, passing up the jovial mania of the former and narrowly avoiding the cartoonish edginess of the latter. A laid-back yet unbearably tense cherry bomb ready to blow your head off at any moment. But he won't, for the sake of the story, no matter how many times you piss in a cereal or fuck his sister. And our aforementioned kawaii anime protagonist Jason Brody is a Voss in the making, starting from his adorable first trachea penetration during his escape from Voss's fuck camp, to launching cars with C4 to kill pirates for fun while wearing 30 tiger pelts and carrying four guns up his ass. You might think this is going in a fight club sort of direction, but it's not, and thank god for that. Far Cry 3 is not the tale of a brave warrior, nor is it the story of triumph over evil. It is the story of a boy becoming a man, and in the process distancing himself from his peers and becoming disenfranchised with the world around him, which I'm sure you can all relate to. Instead of comparing the story of Far Cry 3 to Rambo, I'd compare it to Otaku no Video, or Me Me Me, going back to that anime protagonist comment that you probably thought was a joke. And oh, how you wished it was. Far Cry 3 is a coming of age story in the most cynical sense you can imagine. A story of an outsider being destroyed under the weight of his own hubris, and the consequences of his own actions. Beginning with a noble quest to save his friends, the hardships of the jungle required Jason to acclimate himself to his environment, both becoming one with the jungle and utilizing the very tools that plague it in his advantage. Early on, Jason sheds his brittle armor of childhood naivety, and his body and mind are soon refashioned with the armor of adulthood and all the complications that may bring. Because adulthood in the case of many is not a simple upwards evolution where all of your problems are solved through maturity, finding your path through life as you go along. For many, it's a hardship, and many come across a decision that will define the rest of their life. And for many who encounter that choice, it won't be a choice at all. Will you sacrifice your identity, or will you conform to the expectations of others? In the circumstances of Jason's story in Far Cry 3, conforming would mean the death of his friends and the death of himself. Instead of dying, he chooses to go on and defy destiny, taking on the traditions of the tribe that rescues him, and finding strength in those traditions so that he may fulfill his destiny. Even as he spits in the face of fate, this itself results in an evolution of his character that gives him the strength to save those around him while at the same time alienating them. As Jason follows his own path in life, his journey makes him unrecognizable to those who once considered him a friend or even a lover. And the decision that you make as a player will decide whether these friends of yours deserve the life that Jason allowed them to have. That is some heavy shit. And the weight of the shit only increases as you reflect on what Citra tells you early on, about her brother Voss, how he was once a normal man affiliated with the Rakyat, how he would do anything for his sister, even killing whoever she will dead. These acts warped Voss's mind and created the villain that you see in the present, alienated from the Rakyat for his misdeeds and psychopathic tendencies, and Jason is following in his footsteps. Being ordered to kill by Citra and losing his grip on reality. That is some really heavy sh- And as for the gameplay... Holy fuck, this is awesome! 
uh, Skyrim with gun. Obviously, this game is not a fantasy role-playing game in the traditional sense, at least. The term RPG has become so bastardized from its original meaning that you could basically apply the term to anything nowadays. But I think most would agree that Far Cry 3 leans more towards the similarly broad action-adventure genre. My main reasoning for this is that RPGs tend to have a clear separation between the skill of the player and the skill of the character. How Far Cry 3 blurs this line is having most of the upgrade tree dedicated to extra skills that the player can then use at their disposal, rather than simple stat boosts or whatnot. The game stands on its own merits as a great action game, with its open world sandbox nature giving you the ability to approach any given situation from any given angle. This basically comes down to individual mechanics that you can list off, but when actually listing them it becomes quite apparent that doing so will not make the game look any worse. Upon approaching an enemy outpost, you can start by capping motherfuckers off with a gun, sneak in and eliminate enemies one by one with a knife, free a wild animal from its cage and let it thin out the enemies for you, craft a flame arrow and just set the whole place on fire, launch a jeep with remote explosives and try to land it on one of the enemies, or you can just come back later when you've gotten a silent sniper rifle and just pick them off from afar if you're bereft of creativity and hate fun. When you do successfully take over an outpost, complete a mission, kill an enemy, or pick your nose, you're rewarded with experience points, which lets you unlock new abilities to facilitate doing more missions and reaching your ultimate goal of saving all of Jason's friends and killing the two leaders of the enemy tribe. Whereas leveling up in a game like Skyrim would mean your enemies leveling up as well, the enemies in Far Cry 3 remain static. However, they are also a constant threat no matter how strong you become, since they have guns and bullets hurt. This is the law of the land and there's really nothing you can do about it. You can, however, buy guns of your own. There is no motivation unaccounted for, no task unrewarded. Every action you take has an influence on your overall experience. Therefore, this game has the opposite design philosophy of something like Animal Crossing, where you're expected to do stuff simply because it's fun. Far Cry 3's system of experience and money being a reward for doing stuff is not inherently worse or better, as you feel your actions aren't ever pointless as long as it nets you experience or money. Ubisoft's other series, Assassin's Creed, does not seem to understand this. It doesn't even go far enough to necessitate you gaining experience or money in the first place since the games are insultingly easy and you don't really ever need to buy new gear. Speaking of Ubisoft's other titles, Far Cry 4. It's hard to enjoy Far Cry 4 as its own entity when it was released so soon after 3 and is almost identical in its themes, gameplay, story, and design. As I played it for the first time in 2014, I thought to myself, how can a game so rich with content, so refined in its detail, with such intriguing characters, and with such a unique, beautiful aesthetic be so disappointing by its very nature. A sequel that treads the same water as its predecessor, the minor refinements to its overall design failing to convince me of its merit, its right to exist. The protagonist of Far Cry 4 is not a retarded fuckboy, nor is he a gormless fuckwit. The inner workings of the mind of Ajay Gale remain a mystery to us. The occasional grunt or disconnected reply given to the other characters we come across providing no further insight to the personality of our main character. This is because Ajay does not have a personality, nor does he ever develop one. There is no corruption of the mind and soul of Ajay. He ruthlessly guts his enemies and witnesses atrocities without blinking, or giving the slightest indication that the things he sees or partakes in affect his mental state in the slightest. That narrative of the corruption of the protagonist mirroring that of the villain is not here. Pagan Min is just some asshole who taunts you throughout the game, not even giving you that much incentive to find and kill him until you become more involved in the efforts of this game's native group of rebels fighting against the opposing group, again harkening back to Far Cry 3. The narrative itself doesn't really support Ajay Gale's motivations for saving Kirat or his ability to single-handedly take on an entire army. These little flaws in the presentation add up quickly, especially when most quests in the main story feel like pointless distractions. In Far Cry 3, every single quest had a purpose, and was directly in service of the overarching narrative and the goals Jason Brody was aiming for. In Far Cry 4, it just feels like you're being given busy work, and it fucking sucks ass. I wouldn't even be that disappointed if Far Cry 4 didn't have so much wasted potential. The world Ubisoft to crafted in this game is legitimately beautiful, but without the intrigue to properly facilitate exploring that world, it's all for naught. The soundtrack is downright beautiful at times, but it does little to complement the game and accompanies, which is so decisively mediocre. The truth is, aside from being able to ride elephants, which is pretty fucking rad, Far Cry 4 and by extension Far Cry 5 just don't capture that same magic that the third did. A title that evolved from its predecessor is not only innovated, but took previous innovations and put them to better use. Far Cry 3 is a masterpiece that is all too often overlooked as a dumb, goofy sandbox game. Fuck you, Adam Kovic.